Chapter 8. Gender Equality in the Modern Era, Achievements and Obstacles. 8.1 The Evolution of the Women's Movement. The women's movement, a pinnacle of social change within American history, roots itself in the struggle for women's suffrage in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. This early movement aimed to secure basic civic rights, particularly the right to vote, which was granted through the ratification of the 19th Amendment in 1920. Following this victory, the movement underwent a transformation in phases, responding to the shifting landscapes of political, social, and economic life. The first wave of feminism, as it came to be called, was primarily focused on overcoming blatant legal disparities between men and women. Despite the success in achieving voting rights, women continued to face numerous institutional and societal barriers that limited their participation in the public realm and reinforced their roles within the domestic sphere. The second wave of feminism emerged in the 1960s, gaining inspiration from the civil rights movement and utilizing the power of mass mobilization and legislative change. Feminists of this era sought to dismantle the entrenched gender roles and openly challenge the patriarchy. This period saw the rise of advocacy for reproductive rights, culminating in the landmark Supreme Court case Roe v. Wade in 1973, which legalized abortion nationwide. Scholars and activists also focused on workplace issues, such as equal pay and combating workplace discrimination. The Equal Pay Act of 1963, and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 were significant legal strides made during this time to eradicate gender-based discrimination in employment. The second wave also paved the way for discussions on domestic violence, sexual harassment, and marital rape, topics which had previously been shrouded in silence. The establishment of the National Organization for Women, now in 1966, provided a unified front for addressing these issues. Furthermore, the movement encouraged the development of women's studies programs in universities, challenging the traditional male-centric narrative in academia. However, this wave of feminism did not come without its criticisms, notably for its lack of inclusivity, especially toward women of color and the LGBTQ community. The third wave of feminism, which started in the early 1990s, sought to address the failures and limitations of the previous wave. This wave embraced diversity and intersectionality, a term coined by Kimberlé Crenshaw to describe the way gender intersects with other identities like race, class, and sexual orientation, creating layers of discrimination. Third wave feminism was nuanced, recognizing the varied and unique experiences of all women. The riot GRRRL movement and other similar movements challenged the notion of what it means to be a feminist incorporating a more radical and inclusive approach. In contemporary times, we are witnessing what can be described as the fourth wave of feminism, which is characterized by the utilization of internet and social media as a tool for mobilizing, raising awareness, and forging solidarity across various issues impacting women globally. This wave confronts issues such as body shaming, sexual objectification, and cyberbullying, while also continuing to fight for reproductive rights and equal representation in the workplace and politics. The hashtag MeToo movement, which exploded onto the social scene in 2017, has become a powerful expression of this wave, bringing attention to the pervasive nature of sexual harassment and assault, particularly in the workplace. Today's feminists are building on a legacy of activism while adapting to new challenges and opportunities. The women's movement has come to recognize the imperative for economic justice alongside social justice. The fight for a living wage, affordable health care, and parental leave is seen not only as women's issues, but as economic imperatives that affect entire families and communities. Meanwhile, the gender pay gap persists, with women on average earning 82 cents for every dollar earned by men, and the discrepancy is even greater for women of color. Despite the strides made in legislative reforms and societal attitudes towards gender equality, women continue to be underrepresented in leadership positions in both the public and private sectors. Efforts to rectify this imbalance have led to initiatives such as the push for more women in corporate boardrooms and political offices. The success of these initiatives, however, 
is often hindered by systemic barriers and unconscious biases that perpetuate the status quo. Women in the United States also grapple with societal expectations around motherhood and caregiving responsibilities. Although men are increasingly sharing domestic duties, the primary responsibility still tends to fall on women, influencing their career prospects and economic independence. The inadequate support for working mothers, including the lack of comprehensive childcare systems and the challenges of work life balance, remain critical issues within the ongoing fight for gender equality. The evolution of the women's movement reflects the changing dynamics of American culture and illustrates an ongoing struggle to define and attain equality. The movement has grown more complex as it acknowledges the multiplicity of women's experiences and the need for a multifaceted approach to activism. At its core, the movement remains steadfast in its mission to secure the rights and opportunities for women and to confront and dismantle the structures that have historically marginalized them. As gender roles continue to evolve, the women's movement is called upon to be both reflective and adaptive. The constant, re-examination of strategies and objectives ensures that the movement remains relevant and effective in addressing the multidimensional aspect of gender inequality. True equality necessitates an understanding of the various barriers that women face, and this comprehensive approach reflects the intricate fabric of society. The fight for gender equality is far from over, and the history of the women's movement serves as a testament to the resilience and determination of those who have fought for progress. The movement's trajectory demonstrates a profound commitment to creating a world where gender no longer dictates one's opportunities and rights. While there are many achievements to celebrate, the challenges that persist remind us that the journey towards true equality continues. The constant evolution of the women's movement is essential in addressing both the visible and the insidious forms of gendered oppression that exist in society today. 8.2 The Gender Pay Gap – Causes and Solutions The issue of gender pay disparity has permeated the economic landscape of numerous societies and the United States is no exception. Historically, the gap in earnings between men and women has been a contentious topic, stirring debate among policymakers, activists, and scholars alike. To understand the gender pay gap, it is essential to dissect the various facets that contribute to this persistent inequality. At its core, the gender pay gap is the difference in median earnings of all men and women who work, whether on a full-time or part-time basis. One of the primary factors contributing to the gender pay gap is the concentration of women in lower-paying occupations, a phenomenon often referred to as occupational segregation. Despite strides in educational attainment, women are disproportionately represented in sectors such as education, healthcare, and administrative support. These fields, historically undervalued and underpaid, continue to be dominated by female workers. The devaluation of work typically performed by women has roots in historical precedents and social norms that have assigned lower economic worth to these occupations. Beyond occupational choices, discrimination plays a significant role in perpetuating the pay gap. Gender bias, both conscious and subconscious, can influence hiring, promotion, and compensation decisions in the workplace. Women may be less likely to be considered for high-paying jobs or promotions, and they may be offered lower starting salaries than men for the same positions. Such prejudicial practices, while often subtle and difficult to prove, contribute to an environment where women's work is systematically undervalued. Workplace policies and cultural attitudes surrounding parenthood also heavily impact gender pay disparity. The lack of parental leave policies or flexible work arrangements can disproportionately affect women who more frequently take on caregiver roles within the family. Consequently, career interruptions or the necessity to switch to part-time jobs to manage childcare responsibilities can hinder a woman's income and career trajectory. This burden is exacerbated by the high cost of childcare, compelling some women to leave the workforce entirely, which further widens the gender pay gap. An important dimension to consider when studying the gender pay gap is the variation across different racial and ethnic groups. Intersectionality reveals that the wage discrepancies are not uniform among all women, 
For instance, black and Hispanic women experience a wider pay gap when compared to white women. This intersection of gender and race signifies a compounded disadvantage, where systemic issues of discrimination are layered and intersecting, demanding a nuanced approach to analyzing and addressing pay inequalities. Education, once touted as the great levelizer, does make a difference in earnings, yet it does not close the gender pay gap entirely. Women typically must attain a higher level of education than men to secure comparable pay. The higher educational qualifications of women in today's labor force have not eliminated the gender pay gap, pointing to the persistent underlying issues that education alone cannot resolve. The impact of the gender pay gap extends beyond individual incomes, with long-term effects on economic security. Women, especially as they age, are at a higher risk of poverty and financial instability, in part because lower lifetime earnings translate into reduced savings and lower social security benefits. The cumulative effect of earning less over a career means that women are less financially prepared for retirement, creating a gender disparity that persists into old age. Addressing the gender pay gap requires a multifaceted approach, recognizing that no single solution will suffice. Legislation aimed at ensuring pay equity is a critical first step. Laws that prohibit pay discrimination based on gender and require transparency in compensation can empower women to negotiate salaries on equal footing and hold employers accountable. The Paycheck Fairness Act, for example, has been a proposed piece of legislation in the United States aimed at closing loopholes in the Equal Pay Act of 1963 and providing more protections for women who challenge pay discrimination. In addition to legislative action, cultural shifts in workplace norms and values are paramount. Expanding parental leave policies and offering flexible work schedules can alleviate the burden on caregivers and reduce the likelihood of women being penalized for familial responsibilities. Male employees taking parental leave can help normalize it and mitigate the stigma often associated with women taking time off after having children. The role of education in equipping individuals to challenge gender stereotypes and biases should not be underestimated. Gender studies programs, diversity training, and initiatives that encourage girls to pursue careers in high-paying, male-dominated fields can gradually erode traditional conceptions of gender roles. Moreover, critical thinking skills and awareness raising about societal biases can empower individuals of all genders to advocate for equitable treatment in the workplace. Another avenue for change lies in the hands of businesses and employers. Corporate policies can be restructured to ensure that performance reviews, promotion criteria, and pay scales are gender neutral. Companies can conduct pay audits to evaluate and address any disparities in compensation. Employers can also provide mentorship and sponsorship programs to support women's career advancement and ensure they have equal access to opportunities that lead to high-paying positions. Consumer advocacy and shareholder pressure can influence corporate behavior regarding gender pay equality. As consumers become increasingly aware of gender pay issues, they may prefer to support businesses that demonstrate a commitment to equity. Likewise, investors are beginning to recognize the value of a diverse workforce and equitable pay practices in driving positive business outcomes, and they may press companies to take action on gender pay disparities. The government can foster an environment for change by implementing economic policies that address the systemic factors contributing to the gender pay gap. This can range from subsidizing childcare to reduce the financial burden on working parents to enacting policies that target the minimization of gender discrimination in the workforce. Government interventions may also include support for initiatives that promote equity in STEM fields, where women are underrepresented and the pay is typically higher than in traditionally female-dominated sectors. Finally, men as allies play a crucial role in bridging the gender pay gap. When men advocate for gender equality in the workplace and challenge discriminatory practices and biases, it not only creates a more inclusive environment, but also helps to dismantle the systemic barriers that perpetuate the pay divide. Male allies can mentor women, advocate for their promotion, 
and help ensure that performance and pay standards are applied equally to all employees. The process of eliminating the gender pay gap is complex and requires sustained effort from various sectors of society. Recognition of the multifaceted nature of the problem, coupled with a commitment to fairness and equality, sets a foundation upon which to build. Strategies must be dynamic, adaptable, and inclusive, striving toward not just the mitigation, but the eradication of the economic disparity between genders. Although pervasive, the gender pay gap is not an insurmountable challenge. With the continued dedication of activists, the commitment of policymakers, the support of educational institutions, the oversight of businesses, and the mindfulness of the entire society, progress can be achieved. Efforts must persist in the face of setbacks and delays, driven by the belief that gender equality is not only a moral imperative, but also an economic necessity. As each new generation enters the workforce, the hope is that they will encounter a field that is fairer and more equitable than the one before, thus narrowing the gender pay gap until it becomes a relic of the past. 8.3 Breaking the Glass Ceiling, Women in Leadership Gender equality, particularly in leadership roles, has been a significant issue in the social discourse of the United States for many years. The term glass ceiling refers to the unseen yet unbreachable barrier that keeps minorities and women from rising to the upper rungs of the corporate ladder, regardless of their qualifications or achievements. This concept has played a central role in discussions about gender equality because leadership positions are often associated with power, influence, and financial rewards, and their accessibility is seen as a measure of a society's commitment to equal opportunity. Despite advances in educational attainment and workforce participation, women continue to be underrepresented in leadership roles across various sectors. This disparity is not limited to a single industry or field. It is evident across the board, from corporations to politics, from higher education to the nonprofit sector. While women make up nearly half of the overall workforce, they are still far less likely than men to hold leadership positions. This underrepresentation of women is a multifaceted problem that arises from a variety of factors, including but not limited to societal norms, gender bias, and the challenge of combining leadership roles with traditionally gendered family responsibilities. Research has shown that organizations led by diverse teams often perform better than those without such diversity, suggesting that the presence of women in leadership roles can contribute to a more effective decision-making process. Diversity in viewpoints can lead to more innovative solutions and reflect a broader range of consumer perspectives, making inclusive leadership a pragmatic goal for any organization. Yet, despite recognizing the benefits of diversity, many organizations struggle to implement policies that genuinely level the playing field for minority and women leaders. Barriers to women's leadership take several forms. Social and cultural expectations about gender roles can discourage women from aspiring to leadership positions or from being seen as viable candidates for such roles. Additionally, women often face unconscious biases that can impact hiring, promotion, and evaluation processes. These biases can manifest in gendered conceptions of leadership, where the qualities traditionally associated with effective leaders are also those commonly ascribed to men, such as assertiveness and independence, while women are stereotyped as being nurturing and communal. Workplace structures and practices, too, are implicated in the persistence of the glass ceiling. The lack of flexibility in work schedules can disproportionately affect women, who are more likely to bear the brunt of childcare and domestic responsibilities. Moreover, professional networking and mentorship opportunities, which are crucial for career advancement, are often less accessible to women, possibly due to existing male-dominated leadership networks that unwittingly perpetuate a cycle of exclusion. Combating the glass ceiling requires a multi-pronged approach. Legislative measures such as the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act and the proposed Paycheck Fairness Act have aimed to tackle gender pay disparities and discrimination, an important aspect of advancing women in the workforce. However, for these measures to be effective in breaking the glass ceiling, 
they must be supported by corporate policy changes that actively promote the recruitment, retention, and promotion of women to leadership positions. Addressing the gender leadership gap also requires a re-evaluation of what leadership looks like. Redefining leadership qualities to include a broader range of attributes and acknowledging the diversity of leadership styles may help alleviate gender bias in leadership assessments. There is a growing recognition that qualities such as empathy, collaboration, and emotional intelligence are critical leadership skills that can contribute to an organization's success. Mentorship and sponsorship are two tools that can have a direct impact on the advancement of women in leadership. By supporting women through mentorship, more experienced leaders can provide guidance, advice, and support to help navigate the professional landscape. Sponsorship goes a step further by advocating for a protege's promotions and opportunities. Research suggests that women are over-mentored but under-sponsored compared to their male counterparts, highlighting the need for more advocacy on behalf of women seeking leadership roles. Another strategy to break the glass ceiling is to create transparency in promotion and salary processes. Organizations that adopt transparent criteria for advancement and openly discuss these criteria can demystify the process for all employees and help ensure fairness. However, transparency alone is not enough if the criteria themselves are biased. Therefore, regular reviews of evaluation criteria are necessary to ensure they are free from gendered assumptions and biases. The role of men as allies in the pursuit of gender equality in leadership cannot be overstated. Men who occupy current leadership positions are crucial in setting the tone for inclusion within the organization. They have the ability to model inclusive behaviors, challenge the status quo, and advocate for policies that support women leaders. Effective allyship involves recognizing one's own privilege, listening to the experiences of women colleagues, and taking action to address inequalities as they arise. From a broader perspective, Breaking the glass ceiling is not just a matter of individual advancement, but also of systemic change. This involves rethinking workplace culture and values to prioritize diversity and inclusion, not only as moral imperatives, but also as key drivers of business success. Organizations that cultivate an environment where women are encouraged and supported to pursue leadership positions will ultimately benefit from a wider pool of talent and perspectives. Finally, Visibility and representation matter. The more women are seen in leadership roles, the more normal it becomes, helping to shift public perceptions and inspire the next generation of women leaders. While the number of women in high-profile leadership positions has been increasing, with examples like Kamala Harris becoming the first female vice president of the United States, progress remains gradual. Celebrating women's achievements in leadership is important, not only to honor their contributions, but also to provide role models for others to follow. The journey to breaking the glass ceiling is ongoing, and while significant obstacles remain, progress has been made. Women now lead some of the world's largest companies, hold political office at higher rates than ever before, and continue to make their mark across all sectors. However, True gender equality in leadership will have been achieved when women's representation is not an exception but a given, and when the systemic barriers that maintain the glass ceiling have been dismantled. This vision for the future requires continued advocacy, policy change, and a commitment to equality and diversity as core values within all spheres of society. 8.4 Challenging Traditional Gender Roles Gender roles have historically been defined as the social and behavioral norms that are considered appropriate for individuals of a specific sex within the context of a specific culture. These norms dictate a range of behaviors and attitudes that individuals are expected to adopt based on their sex at birth, encompassing aspects of life from self-presentation and career choices to domestic responsibilities and interpersonal relationships. However, the modern era has witnessed a significant shift in the perception and establishment of traditional gender roles, catalyzed by a range of socio-political developments, legal reforms, and cultural changes. The struggle for gender equality has facilitated a growing awareness and openness towards rejecting rigid gender roles that restrict an individual's potential and freedom. 
Movements advocating for women's rights have enabled substantial advancements in securing equal opportunities in a multitude of spaces, including educational institutions, the workplace, and government. The rise of feminism and its various waves have played a critical role, emphasizing the importance of individual choice and the deconstruction of stereotypical roles that have limited women to specific, often subservient, functions within society. In recent years, the narrative has expanded beyond the binary notions of male and female to embrace a spectrum of gender identities. The recognition and support of transgender, non-binary, and gender non-conforming individuals have challenged the simplistic categorization of gender roles, pressuring societies to rethink and often legally recognize a broader array of gender identities. Advocacy for these communities has led to more inclusive policies and a gradual erosion of customary gender roles that were previously accepted without question. Educational reforms have been instrumental in challenging traditional gender roles. The promotion of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM careers among girls, and the encouragement of boys to explore roles in nurturing professions such as nursing or teaching have begun to dismantle the stereotype of gender-constrained career paths. Such educational policies aim to align opportunities and incentives irrespective of gender, enabling individuals to make career choices based on interest and ability, rather than societal expectations. The increasing participation of women in politics and leadership roles has served to redefine gender norms. Female heads of state, executives, and thought leaders are slowly changing the landscape of what is traditionally expected from women. These powerful role models demonstrate that gender does not inherently determine one's capabilities or suitability for a position of authority, thereby challenging the deeply entrenched prejudice that often favors men for leadership roles. Despite these advancements, significant obstacles to gender equality persist. One of the primary challenges involves entrenched societal and cultural norms. Many societies still cling to outdated perceptions of masculinity and femininity, which continue to influence expectations and behavior. In certain cultures, deviations from these traditional roles are met with social ostracism, discrimination, or even violence, which can hinder progress towards a more gender-equitable world. Another obstacle is institutional sexism, which is often more difficult to eradicate because it is built into the very fabric of organizational structures and practices. This can range from gender pay gaps and unequal opportunities for advancement to the undervaluation of work typically performed by women. Addressing these issues requires systematic and comprehensive changes at all organizational levels, a task that is often met with resistance from those who benefit from maintaining the status quo. Within the family unit, traditional gender roles have often assigned childcare and domestic duties to women, a practice that persists despite shifts in public attitudes. The depiction of the male breadwinner and female homemaker is a stereotype that still resonates in many households. This can place undue pressure on women to juggle professional aspirations with home responsibilities, leading to imbalances in work-life dynamics. The proliferation of social media and digital platforms has presented both an opportunity and a challenge in the quest to redefine gender roles. While these platforms have provided a space for progressive narratives to flourish and for marginalized voices to be heard, they have also perpetuated harmful stereotypes and facilitated the spread of gender-based harassment. The anonymity of online interactions can embolden individuals to express regressive or abusive views countering the efforts to establish more inclusive and diverse understandings of gender roles. Media representation plays a considerable role in shaping societal norms regarding gender roles. The portrayal of characters in film, television, literature, and news media influences public perceptions and either solidifies or challenges traditional gender stereotypes. Ensuring diverse and nuanced representations can erode harmful stereotypes and provide society with a broader range of archetypes that reflect the multifaceted nature of human identity. Moreover, the intersectionality of gender with other aspects of identity, such as race, class, disability, and sexual orientation, complicates efforts to upend traditional gender roles. 
Members of marginalized groups may face additional layers of discrimination that interact with gender-based issues, making the fight for equality more challenging. Efforts to promote gender equality must therefore be cognizant of these intersecting factors to avoid privileging certain groups over others and to ensure that all individuals have the opportunity to live freely and authentically. In the workplace, the implementation of policies aimed at creating a balanced work environment for all genders, such as parental leave for both mothers and fathers, flexible work schedules, and strict anti-discrimination measures, is a critical step forward. However, the success of such policies hinges on a willingness from both employers and employees to shake off antiquated ideas about gender roles and embrace a more fluid and equitable understanding of work-life balance. As societies continue to advance the conversation around gender roles, the education of children and young adults in ways that encourage critical thinking, empathy, and respect for diversity will be paramount. Schools and parents alike have a responsibility to instill values that promote gender equality from an early age, thereby preparing the next generation to better navigate and possibly overcome the complexities of gender in their personal and professional lives. Challenging traditional gender roles is not a task that can be completed overnight. It entails ongoing dialogues, continuous advocacy, legal reforms, educational overhauls, and most importantly, a collective willingness to embrace change. Though progress can be slow and fraught with resistance, the journey towards an egalitarian society that values individuals for their unique contributions rather than their adherence to prescribed gender norms is a pursuit that holds immeasurable rewards for all. 8.5 Diversity and Intersectionality in Gender Issues The discussion of gender equality is complex and multifaceted, in part because it intersects with numerous aspects of identity, such as race, ethnicity, sexuality, class, and disability. This intersectionality, an analytical framework conceptualized by scholar Kimberley Williams Crenshaw, enables us to understand how various forms of inequality and discrimination overlap and influence one another. As a result, it broadens the discourse on gender issues, moving it beyond a binary understanding of gender and incorporating the diverse experiences of individuals with multiple intersecting identities. In the pursuit of genuine gender equality, acknowledging and addressing the specific challenges faced by individuals at these intersections is critical. Intersectionality plays a vital role in contemporary conversations about gender equality, for it reveals that gender discrimination does not occur in a vacuum. Instead, gender-based inequities often interact synergistically with other forms of oppression, such as racism, homophobia, and ableism. For example, the experiences and struggles of black women differ substantially from those of white women due to the additional layer of racial discrimination they frequently encounter. The disparities in pay equity are a clear example. While women in general earn less than men, the wage gap is significantly wider for women of color when compared to white men, and also when compared to white women, demonstrating how intertwined systems of oppression can exacerbate inequality. Expanding our understanding of gender equality to incorporate diverse perspectives requires an examination of power dynamics at play in society. Power is not distributed equally, and social systems are often set up to favor certain groups over others. The experiences of transgender individuals, for instance, illustrate that gender-based discrimination can be intensified by a lack of societal recognition or understanding of gender identities outside the male-female binary. Transgender and non-binary people face unique challenges, ranging from barriers to healthcare access and legal recognition to high rates of violence and harassment. Efforts to advance gender equality must, therefore, include actions tailored to protect and uplift these marginalized groups. In the workplace, Diversity and intersectionality have a significant impact on gender equality. While some progress has been made in terms of women's representation in various professional fields, this progress is not uniform across all sectors or among all groups of women. For instance, women of color are underrepresented in leadership positions in corporate America, reflecting a clear disparity that goes beyond gender and delves into the complex interplay of race and gender. 
Additionally, LGBTQ individuals, particularly those who are open about their sexual orientation or gender identity, may face discrimination during hiring processes or within their work environments. Efforts to build a more inclusive and equitable workplace must therefore take into account these intersecting identities. Intersectional approaches to healthcare have also revealed significant disparities. Women's health issues are often undervalued in medical research and practice, and this problem is exacerbated for women from marginalized communities. Women of color, particularly black women, have higher rates of maternal mortality compared to white women in the United States. These outcomes are linked not only to socioeconomic factors, but also to biases within healthcare systems that negatively affect quality of care. To achieve gender equality in healthcare, policies must address the full spectrum of issues that compound gender discrimination. Educational attainment is another domain where the impact of diversity and intersectionality on gender equality is evident. While overall trends in education show that women are achieving higher levels of education than men, this generalization masks disparities among women from different backgrounds. For instance, first-generation female students or those from lower socioeconomic backgrounds often face barriers that their more privileged peers do not encounter. These challenges can include financial constraints, lack of access to mentors, and cultural pressures that discourage them from pursuing higher education or particular fields of study. The criminal justice system presents yet another area where intersectionality informs the conversation on gender equality. Women, particularly women of color, are the fastest growing population in prisons. This rise is not only a consequence of their actions, but also a result of institutional practices that disproportionately penalize women for certain offenses, like drug-related crimes, and fail to consider the context of their situations, such as poverty or histories of abuse. To pursue true gender equality, reforms must take into account these various dimensions of identity, including how they intersect with the judicial and penal processes. In the realm of political representation, the issue of diversity and intersectionality is critical. Women are underrepresented in political offices across the nation, and this underrepresentation is even more pronounced for women from minority groups. When considering questions of gender equality in politics, one must account for the additional hurdles that women of color, LGBTQ women and women with disabilities face in gaining political recognition and power. Addressing these challenges requires targeted measures that support the political ambitions of all women, ensuring a truly representative democracy. Gender issues within the context of immigration showcase the particular vulnerabilities faced by immigrant women. These women often encounter multiple layers of discrimination due to their gender, immigration status, and frequently, their race. They may face exploitation in the workforce, barriers to accessing social services, and threats of deportation which can prevent them from seeking help in abusive situations. Gender equality measures must therefore be sensitive to these intersectional challenges and include protective policies for immigrant women. Finally, in the media and popular culture, the representation of gender is increasingly examined through an intersectional lens. The portrayal of women in film, television, and other forms of media is often criticized for its lack of diversity and for perpetuating stereotypes. For women of diverse backgrounds, these representations, or lack thereof, can have a significant impact on self-image and societal attitudes. Promoting equitable and diverse representations requires conscious efforts by media makers to bring a wide range of authentic stories and characters to the forefront. The journey towards gender equality is complex and necessitates a multifaceted approach that incorporates the experiences of all individuals. Considering the diverse realities of women's lives through intersectionality demands attentiveness to the nuances of discrimination and a commitment to inclusivity in the development and implementation of policies and initiatives. Gender issues, steeped in layers of societal context, cannot be neatly compartmentalized or universally solved with one-size-fits-all solutions. 
it is imperative for advocates, policymakers, and society at large to embrace this complexity, to forge a path toward equity that honors and uplifts every voice. 8.6 Combating Gender-Based Violence Gender-based violence, GBV, is a profound and widespread problem globally, affecting the health and well-being of many individuals, particularly women and girls. This pernicious form of violence includes a wide range of human rights violations, including sexual harassment, physical and emotional abuse, forced marriage, human trafficking, and female genital mutilation. These acts can result in physical, sexual, psychological, and economic harm or suffering to victims. The combat against gender-based violence is an ongoing struggle, integral to achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. It is essential to acknowledge that gender-based violence is rooted in historical and structural power disparities between men and women. These disparities are deeply embedded within social, political, and economic systems around the world. Persistently, society has upheld norms and beliefs that perpetuate the marginalization of women and normalize violence against them. As a consequence, GBV continues to be one of the most emblematic and resilient barriers to gender equality. Efforts to combat gender-based violence are multifaceted and involve various stakeholders, including governments, NGOs, activists, and community leaders. Legal frameworks provide the foundation for such efforts, the implementation of laws that criminalize acts of gender-based violence and protect the rights of survivors is a critical step. Moreover, it is crucial that these laws are adequately enforced, which requires a justice system trained and willing to handle gender-based violence cases with the seriousness and sensitivity they demand. Support services for survivors of gender-based violence are indispensable for their recovery and empowerment. These services include safe houses, psychological counseling, legal assistance, and economic support programs. Access to these resources can help survivors build new lives free from abuse. However, the availability and quality of these services vary widely, with some regions lacking the necessary infrastructure and funding to provide appropriate support. In the context of prevention, Education plays a pivotal role in dismantling the cultural, societal, and familial norms that perpetuate gender-based violence. Comprehensive sexuality education that includes a focus on gender equality, human rights, and respectful relationships is vital in shaping the attitudes and behaviors of young people. Such education can contribute to the prevention of GBV by challenging sexist attitudes and norms from an early age. Media and technology can be instrumental in both perpetuating and fighting gender-based violence. While the internet and social media platforms can expose individuals to harmful content and behaviors that encourage GBV, they also offer tools for raising awareness, sharing survivor stories, and fostering supportive communities. Campaigns and movements that leverage these technologies can spread messages far and broad, encouraging societal change. Civil society and grassroots movements have historically been at the forefront of confronting gender-based violence. These movements work tirelessly to promote societal change, raise awareness, and advocate for survivors. The hashtag MeToo movement, born out of social media, has brought a renewed focus on the prevalence of sexual harassment and assault, demonstrating the power of collective voices in demanding change and holding perpetrators accountable. The intersectionality of gender-based violence must not be overlooked. Women and girls who are marginalized due to race, sexuality, disability, or socioeconomic status often face compounded forms of violence and discrimination. An effective approach to combating GBV must therefore incorporate an understanding of these intersecting identities and address the multiple layers of discrimination that can exacerbate violence and hinder access to justice and services. At the international level, efforts to combat gender-based violence include various conventions and agreements such as the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women CEDAW, and the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. These documents provide an international legal framework and a comprehensive agenda for national action and international cooperation to protect women from all forms of violence. 
government policies must work in concert with these international commitments to make a significant impact. This requires not only crafting and enacting appropriate laws, but also allocating adequate resources to put plans into action. Budgets must reflect the priority of combating GBV, ensuring that initiatives are sustainable and effective. It also involves sensitizing law enforcement and legal professionals to the specific needs of GBV survivors. Data collection and research are critical components of the fight against gender-based violence. Detailed data allows for the monitoring of trends, the effectiveness of interventions, and the identification of gaps in service provision. Research can also aid in understanding the complex causes of GBV and developing evidence-based strategies for prevention and response. Despite efforts, reliable data on GBV is often lacking, which hampers the ability to fully address the issue. Private sector involvement has emerged as an important aspect in the fight against gender-based violence. Companies can create policies that promote gender equality and non-discriminatory practices in the workplace. They can also support employees who are survivors of GBV through providing resources and accommodations. Moreover, corporate social responsibility initiatives can fund and promote programs aimed at combating GBV in the communities where they operate. The role of men and boys in combating gender-based violence is increasingly recognized. It is not solely a women's issue. Men are often the perpetrators of GBV and hold the key to change. Promoting positive masculinity, engaging men and boys in conversations about gender norms, and encouraging them to stand up against violence can significantly contribute to reducing GBV. Initiatives that involve men as allies can shift social attitudes and behaviors towards women and gender relations. A long-term commitment is necessary in the struggle against gender-based violence. Achievements can be undermined by changes in political leadership, economic downturns, or shifts in societal attitudes. Sustainable change requires enduring efforts at all levels of society, from changing individual behaviors to transforming institutional structures that enable GBV. Finally, the importance of survivor-led initiatives cannot be understated. Survivors offer an essential perspective, and when they are empowered to lead and participate actively in the battle against gender-based violence, they bring an authenticity and urgency that can accelerate progress. The knowledge, experience, and insights of survivors are invaluable resources in crafting effective strategies and policies to confront GBV and in inspiring others to join the cause. 8.7 Gender Equality on the Global Stage Gender equality is not only a fundamental human right, but also a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. On the global stage, gender equality has been addressed through various legal frameworks, policies, and social movements that seek to overturn centuries of discrimination and inequality. The first international instrument to explicitly mention gender equality as a goal was the United Nations Charter, signed in 1945. Since then, numerous international declarations, treaties, and initiatives have been established such as the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women CEDAW, in 1979 and the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action in 1995. Despite these international efforts, gender equality remains elusive in many parts of the world. Gender disparities persist in education, employment, politics, and cultural norms, hindering the advancement of women and girls. Educating both boys and girls is essential in establishing a society that values both genders equally. Education provides knowledge and skills needed to participate fully in economic, political, and social life. However, worldwide, more girls than boys are denied access to education, and the reasons range from cultural expectations and poverty to safety concerns in conflict-affected regions. In the workforce, Gender inequality manifests as a persistent wage gap, underrepresentation in leadership positions, and sectors where one gender predominates, leaving little room for the other. Financial independence and the ability to engage in meaningful work are crucial for empowerment. The wage gap not only signifies ongoing inequality, but also limits the economic development of nations. 
Women in leadership roles often face double standards and lack the same opportunities for mentorship and growth afforded to their male counterparts. The ripple effects of these inequalities stifle innovation and maintain status quo that are resistant to gender balanced perspectives. Political participation via representation in government and policymaking is another critical area for gender equality. Despite strides in some nations, others have seen minimal increases in the number of women in positions of power. Female leaders often bring different priorities to the table, including a focus on social issues such as education, healthcare, and family support. Representation affects policy and ultimately, the lived experiences of citizens. Increased participation of women in politics is linked to greater accountability and democracy. Cultural norms and practices perpetuate gender based stereotypes and roles that can marginalize and harm women and girls. Traditional expectations about behavior, dress, and the role in family and society can be restrictive and detrimental. There is a necessity to challenge and change these deep rooted cultural patterns that discriminate based on gender. Media representation plays a significant role in shaping societal attitudes, and misrepresentation or underrepresentation in media can reinforce harmful stereotypes. Advocating for and showcasing diverse and complex characters can help counteract these stereotypes and provide more accurate reflections of the world's populations. Violence against women and girls is a severe violation of human rights with far reaching consequences. This violence can take multiple forms, including domestic abuse, sexual harassment, trafficking, and harmful practices like female genital mutilation. Such acts of violence are rooted in the belief that the female gender is subordinate. Efforts to combat these devastating practices require collaborative action and education to change attitudes and beliefs that support violence against women. The global struggle for gender equality also grapples with issues of intersectionality, acknowledging how factors such as race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, and disability intersect with gender and can compound discrimination and exclusion. Understanding intersectionality is crucial for formulating inclusive gender policies and initiatives. It ensures that the movement for gender equality benefits all women, embracing the diverse circumstances that shape their lives. Access to health care, particularly sexual and reproductive health services, is another facet where gender equality matters greatly. The right to make decisions about one's own body is a cornerstone of gender equality. In some regions, women's access to reproductive health services is restricted through legislation or lack of availability, which can have profound impacts on their health, autonomy, and socioeconomic status. Economic empowerment and participation are core elements of achieving gender equality. Investment in women's economic activities, fair policies and practices that support women entrepreneurs, and access to financial services all help improve gender equality. Microfinance initiatives and programs aimed at developing women's skills in entrepreneurial activities have shown promising results. Nevertheless, barriers such as insufficient access to capital, markets and networks hamper women's full economic participation. Legal frameworks and reforms have a substantial role in facilitating or restricting gender equality. Laws that ensure equal property rights, inheritance laws, and protections against discrimination are vital. Legal barriers can impede women from exercising their rights, and even where laws are in place, enforcement can be weak. The rule of law is essential not only in protecting rights, but in signaling to society the importance of gender equality. International development cooperation and humanitarian action often include gender as a focal area, reflecting the understanding that gender equality is integral to sustainable development. Development programs that aim to improve gender equality must be context sensitive and participatory, involving the people they aim to help, particularly women, in their design and implementation. These initiatives can empower communities drive social change, and contribute to the resilience of societies facing economic, social, or environmental challenges. An overview of gender equality on the global stage reveals a complex tapestry of achievements and obstacles. 
The international community continues to work toward a world where gender no longer determines one's opportunities or rights. The task is challenging, with resistance stemming from deeply ingrained cultural norms, economic interests, and political power structures. Successes in one area may reveal or even create challenges in another. Yet, the global pursuit of gender equality is unwavering, and each advancement serves as a building block for a more equitable future. The gender equality movement is ever-evolving, responding to the failures and victories of today, and learning from them to shape a more equal tomorrow. 8.8 .8 Feminism Today – New Challenges and Directions Feminism in the modern era continues as a dynamic and multifaceted movement, with goals that evolve alongside societal changes. As with any social movement, feminism faces both internal and external challenges that shape its trajectory. Today, it battles persisting inequalities while adjusting to new social landscapes and ideological conflicts that demand attention and strategic navigation. Understanding these current challenges is pivotal to appreciating the complexity of the movement and the relentless pursuit of gender equality in a world marked by rapid transformation. One significant challenge that feminism confronts in contemporary society is the varying interpretations of what feminism means. The movement has diversified into various strands, each emphasizing different issues, tenets, and strategies. This has led to vigorous debates within the movement, with some advocating for a focus on structural changes, while others stress the importance of individual empowerment and choice. The spectrum ranges from radical feminists, who seek to dismantle patriarchal structures, to liberal feminists, who aim for equality within existing systems. While this plurality of voices is a strength, it also brings complexities as feminists attempt to find common ground and collective action amidst divergent ideologies. Another concern is the phenomenon of backlash against feminist gains. As the movement has made strides in altering public discourse and enacting legal changes, some segments of society have pushed back perceiving these advancements as threats to traditional values or established gender roles. This reactive movement often manifests in the form of politicized campaigns or cultural commentary that seeks to discredit feminist achievements. Feminists today must therefore contend with organized efforts to erode progress and maintain vigilance against the rollback of rights and protections achieved through decades of advocacy. With the rise of digital technology and social media, Feminism today grapples with both opportunities and hazards in the online realm. Cyberfeminism leverages the internet as a space for mobilization, education, and empowerment. However, digital platforms have also been arenas for intensified misogyny and harassment, where feminists are targeted with relentless campaigns of abuse aimed at silencing their voices. Addressing issues around internet safety, data privacy, and digital rights becomes crucial. Consequently, current feminist activism must navigate these digital landscapes smartly, advocating for inclusive and secure online environments while using these tools to further their objectives. Intersectionality has emerged as a crucial framework in modern feminism, highlighting how different forms of discrimination, such as race, class, sexuality, and disability, intersect with gender. As the marginalized experiences of women of color, transgender women and others have gained prominence, feminism emphasizes an inclusive approach that addresses the multifaceted nature of oppression. This shift toward intersectionality has generated transformative discussions within the movement, but it also poses challenges in terms of creating strategies that are both sensitive to and encompassing of diverse experiences. Economic inequality remains a persistent barrier to gender equality and an area of focus for contemporary feminists. Women, especially those from marginalized communities, are disproportionately impacted by issues such as wage gaps, unequal job opportunities, and inadequate maternity leave policies. Women's economic empowerment is thus a central tenet of feminism today, with efforts directed towards advocating for equitable work conditions, pay equity, and social welfare measures that support women's financial independence and security. In the realm of politics and governance, feminism continues to address the underrepresentation of women in decision-making positions. 
Despite some progress, women remain significantly underrepresented in political leadership roles, both in the United States and globally. Feminists advocate for increased female political participation, aiming to ensure that women's perspectives are integrated into policy-making processes and that governmental bodies are representative of the demographics they serve. Feminism today is also concerned with the cultural representation of women across various media. Advocacy around issues such as body image, media stereotyping, and the lack of diversity in entertainment industries calls for a more nuanced and respectful portrayal of women. The movement stresses the importance of challenging the often narrow definitions of femininity presented in the media and working toward representation that reflects the true diversity of women's lives and experiences. The global context of feminism brings additional layers to the movement. Feminist activists emphasize the importance of solidarity across borders and recognize the interconnected nature of gender-based struggles worldwide. However, this global outlook also necessitates sensitivity to cultural differences and the avoidance of imposing Western feminist ideals onto diverse societies. Thus, feminists are tasked with fostering international collaborations that respect cultural variations while striving for universal principles of gender equality. Issues of sexuality and bodily autonomy continue to be a battleground for feminism today. Debates about reproductive rights, sexual education, LGBTQ inclusivity, and gender identity rights remain at the forefront of feminist activism. Advocates fight for comprehensive reproductive health care access, protection against sexual violence, and the right to self-identify one's gender. These issues highlight the ongoing struggle for control over one's body and sexual agency, which are fundamental to feminist pursuits of freedom and equality. Lastly, the environmental movement intersects with feminism, as women globally are often the most affected by ecological degradation and climate change. Ecofeminism explores the connections between the exploitation of the earth and the oppression of women, advocating for sustainability and social justice. Here, feminism pushes for an environmental ethic that considers the impact on marginalized populations and calls for gender-sensitive responses to ecological challenges. In summary, feminism today is as active and necessary as in any previous era. It continues to evolve, addressing new challenges such as digital activism, intersectionality, and global interconnectedness, while never losing sight of long-standing issues like economic inequality and political representation. These multifaceted efforts collectively reflect a robust, responsive, and resilient movement that both shapes and adapts to the changing fabric of society, even as it faces opposition and internal debates. The steady pursuit of a world where gender no longer dictates one's opportunities, rights, and value remains the guiding star for feminism's future direction and the impetus for its ongoing evolution. 8.9 Educational Equity and Gender Gender equity in education is a subject of considerable significance in the contemporary United States. It encompasses a broad spectrum of issues, ranging from access to educational resources to the representation of different genders in academic disciplines and the prevalence of gender biases in school environments. The pursuit of educational equity has a profound impact on the economic and social dynamics of society. Access to education across genders has improved over time, with statistical parity in enrollment numbers at primary and secondary educational levels. In the United States, the enforcement of Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972 played a crucial role in prohibiting sex discrimination in federally funded education programs and activities. This has facilitated a significant increase in female participation in sports and academic opportunities previously dominated by males. However, disparities persist in how genders are encouraged or discouraged from pursuing certain academic paths, particularly in higher education and within specific disciplines, such as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics (STEM). The underrepresentation of women in STEM fields is a notable example of educational inequality 
that persists despite years of interventions and policy initiatives. This underrepresentation is often attributed to a myriad of factors, including societal stereotypes, the prevalence of male dominated cultures within these fields, and the lack of female role models in STEM professions. Initiatives such as encouraging female participation in math and science from a young age, mentorship programs, and ensuring gender neutral language in textbooks are steps being taken to mitigate these disparities. In addressing educational equity, one must consider the subtleties of gender biases that infiltrate classroom interactions and instructional materials. Studies have shown that teachers may unknowingly treat students differently based on gender, which can affect students' engagement and self-esteem. For instance, boys may be called upon more frequently to answer questions in math or science classes, reinforcing the stereotype that these subjects are more suitable for males. Meanwhile, girls may receive disproportionate encouragement in language arts and humanities. Such differential treatment can instill and perpetuate gender biases that affect students' academic choices and performance. The educational experience of transgender and non-binary individuals adds another dimension to the discussion on gender equality. Transgender students often face unique challenges, such as discrimination, insufficient policy protection, and lack of access to facilities that align with their gender identity. These obstacles can severely hinder their educational experience and psychological well-being. Schools and educational institutions are increasingly recognizing the need to provide a safe and affirming environment for all students, regardless of gender identity. The impact of gender roles instilled from early childhood plays a significant role in shaping educational aspirations and achievements. Cultural expectations and parental attitudes often influence the education paths chosen by young people. For instance, girls may be steered toward subjects considered to be more traditionally feminine, while boys may be dissuaded from pursuing interests in fields perceived as less masculine. This dynamic can limit individuals' true potential and contribute to the gendered stratification of the labor market. Educational practices and materials that reinforce gender equity contribute to creating an inclusive academic environment. For example, schools that offer literature and history curriculums inclusive of women's and LGBTQ people's contributions foster a more accurate and comprehensive understanding of society. By exposing students to diverse perspectives, educators can combat the perpetuation of stereotypes and facilitate a more equitable learning environment. Gender equality in education also relates to the accessibility and quality of sex education. Comprehensive sex education that includes information about consent, gender identity, and sexual orientation is paramount to fostering healthy relationships and self-awareness among students. However, sex education policy varies greatly by state, with some regions emphasizing abstinence-only education, while others adopt a more inclusive and informative approach. This leads to inequities in the knowledge and resources available to young people across different locations. Harassment and violence in educational settings are crucial issues affecting gender equity. Gender-based violence, including sexual harassment, has been a persistent problem within schools and colleges. These incidents can cause long-lasting trauma and significantly disrupt the educational attainment and retention of the victims, predominantly female students. Institutions are working on implementing more effective measures to prevent harassment and to ensure support for those who have experienced it. The role of affirmative action in promoting gender equity in education remains a contentious topic. Affirmative action policies, aimed at increasing the representation of historically marginalized groups in education and employment, have faced criticism and legal challenges. Advocates argue that such policies are necessary to correct systemic inequalities, while opponents claim they can lead to reverse discrimination. The debate over affirmative action underscores the complexity of achieving gender equality in educational establishments and beyond. Career guidance and counseling in educational settings are pivotal in affirming students' vocational interests and can have gender-equitable or inequitable effects. 
Career counselors play a crucial role in challenging or reinforcing gender norms, which can influence students' career choices. Effective counseling should aim to broaden students' perceptions of career options and encourage them to pursue paths aligned with their interests and abilities, free from gender bias. Lastly, parental and community involvement in education can significantly impact gender equity. Parents' expectations and the educational resources provided by communities can either fortify or undermine attempts at achieving gender balance in education. Engaging parents and communities in discussions about gender equity, offering training for parental involvement, and fostering environments that support all genders equally can help solidify the gains made within educational settings. 8.10 Policy Initiatives for Gender Parity Gender equality remains a critical and salient issue in contemporary society, where various policy initiatives have been implemented or proposed to enforce gender parity. In order to understand the efficacy and scope of these initiatives, it is necessary to consider their design, target demographics, underlying challenges, and execution strategies. A multidimensional approach to tackling gender inequality is necessary due to the complexity and intersectionality of gender-related issues. The need for policy initiatives stems from historical inequities that have persisted despite advancements in human rights and civil liberties. Comprehensive policy measures are essential in addressing systemic barriers that impede women and gender minorities from accessing the same opportunities and resources as their male peers. These initiatives are wide-ranging, spanning from educational reform and workplace equity programs to healthcare and political representation. The intention is to create a more just and equitable society through deliberate and directed legislative and administrative actions. Education serves as a foundation for long-term societal change, and policies aimed at gender equality often begin here. Governments and educational institutions have enacted policies designed to encourage the participation of girls and women in fields where they are underrepresented, such as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics (STEM). Scholarship programs, targeted recruitment drives, and advocacy are a part of these educational initiatives. Furthermore, educational curricula are increasingly incorporating gender studies to challenge traditional stereotypes and promote a nuanced understanding of gender roles. In the realm of employment, equal pay legislation has been a prominent method of attempting to ensure that women receive the same compensation as men for equivalent work. Despite these efforts, the gender pay gap persists, indicating that policy alone is insufficient without rigorous enforcement mechanisms and cultural shifts within workplaces. Policies have also aimed to restructure the workplace to be more accommodating and inclusive, which includes the institution of family leave policies, flexible work hours, and anti-discrimination laws that protect individuals from being targeted based on their gender. Healthcare is another critical sector in which gender parity policies strive to make a significant impact. Reproductive rights, access to maternal health care, and the quality of health care services provided to women and gender minorities are critical policy areas. Legislation that seeks to protect and expand these rights has been implemented in various jurisdictions, ensuring that decisions concerning reproductive health remain in the hands of individuals rather than being subject to political or ideological constraints. Political representation is recognized as a distinct avenue through which gender parity can be realized. Quotas and other affirmative action measures have been debated and adopted in different nations to increase the number of women serving in government bodies and public offices. The premise is that more female policymakers will lead to a greater focus on issues that affect women and help to break down structural barriers. In addition, initiatives have been taken to directly confront the culture of violence and discrimination against women and gender minorities. This includes programs focused on the prevention of domestic violence, sexual harassment, and assault, as well as efforts to change societal attitudes through public awareness campaigns. Legal reforms to protect the rights of survivors and to bring perpetrators to justice are key components of this struggle against gender-based violence. The private sector plays a substantial role in gender equality, 
and policy initiatives have increasingly sought to involve corporate entities in the pursuit of gender parity. By encouraging businesses to adopt gender-sensitive practices through incentives and mandates, the private sector becomes a partner in establishing gender equality. Corporate policies mandating salary transparency, diversity and inclusion training, and equal representation in leadership positions are becoming more prevalent due to both societal pressures and the acknowledged business benefits of a diverse workforce. International policy also has significant implications for advancing gender equality. Agreements such as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, specifically Goal 5, which aims for gender equality, have set targets for the global community. Countries committing to these goals are expected to work towards the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women and girls. International cooperation and support, especially for nations where gender equality is a less prominent priority, are essential for these policies to gain traction. Nonetheless, policy initiatives for gender parity face significant barriers. In many cases, entrenched cultural norms and institutional biases impede the full realization of gender-focused policies. Resistance comes from various sectors of society that view such policies as threats to the status quo. This implies that policymaking must be complemented by efforts to change societal norms and attitudes. Engaging communities, leaders, and influential institutions in the dialogue about gender equality is paramount for the success of any policy initiative. Further obstacles emerge from the complexity of policymaking itself. Gaining political consensus on gender parity initiatives can be an arduous process, and in democracies, electoral cycles often disrupt the continuity and implementation of long-term policy strategies. Effective policy implementation also necessitates adequate resources, including funding, personnel training, and monitoring systems to track progress and make necessary adjustments. Without these components, gender parity policies struggle to make the intended impact. As societal awareness of gender issues continues to deepen, policy initiatives for gender parity become more refined and targeted. It is crucial to recognize that the pursuit of gender equality is an ongoing process requiring sustained commitment from all sectors of society. Continuous evaluation of existing policies, using data and research to identify gaps and inefficiencies, and adapting to changing societal dynamics are essential components of this process. Only through rigorous, persistent, and collaborative efforts can gender parity be achieved and maintained in the modern era.